Wait, remember Squirrel Boy? It was Cartoon Network's short-lived show about Squirrel and Boy. Contrary to initial impressions, there was no singular Squirrel Boy with super squirrel powers and a Squirrel Man mentor. Instead, we are given an anthropomorphic squirrel that can walk and talk and even has intelligence. Well, kinda. Not, not really, actually. His name is Rodney J. Squirrel, and Andy is his boy. Rodney's informal owner, if you will. Listen, the show's weird, okay? The show premiered its first season on May 27, 2006, and ran for two seasons for a total of 26 episodes, plus an unaired pilot. There was also a series of six shorts released a year after its last episode aired. Each episode is split into two 11-minute segments, and in each 11 minutes, we are brought along on a new adventure through suburbia with Andy and Rodney. It aired during the time when Cartoon Network was about to start putting a lot of emphasis on the transition to a CN real era in the next couple years. But that isn't necessarily the reason that rarely anyone remembers the show today. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this episode of our Wait Remember series. Y yep, that, that's my intro transition. Pretty nuts, right? I don't want to know. I will share but only because it will torment you. Squirrel Boy takes place in the suburbs of Grand Rapids, Minnesota. One of our main characters is Andy, voiced by Pamela Adlon. Andy is a highly anxious nine-year-old boy with obsessive compulsive disorder. He's also allergic to cashews, and I mean, look at him. Of course he is. Like a typical nine-year-old, Andy is naive and easily coerced into shenanigans by his pet squirrel and best friend, Rodney. Rodney is the squirrel in this boy squirrel relationship, and he is a typical manipulator with schemes that are morally questionable at best. He is voiced by Richard Stephen Horvitz. Being a squirrel, the writers seem to embrace that very chaotic sense of animalistic self-preservation, and reflect it in the way that Rodney approaches his day-to-day. -day. Many of his plans or general hijinks are motivated by selfish reasons or from happenstance of the will of the universe. It seems that Andy's dad recognizes Rodney's true nature. Mr. Johnson is voiced by Kurtwood Smith. He serves the typical oppressive adult figure that Andy and Rodney have to constantly dodge. His unwavering distaste towards Rodney is constantly being brought up but never acted upon even though Rodney lives in the Johnson house and constantly pushes his buttons. Mr. Johnson is pretty quick to anger and he's protective of his son, which makes him a great adversary for Rodney who is constantly getting Andy into trouble and making attempts on his life because he's allergic to cashews. Of course he is. So Mr. Johnson's concerns seem somewhat justified here, maybe a bit too aggressive sometimes but there's at least a solid caring for his son reason. Andy's mom, Lucille, is voiced by Nancy Sullivan. She is pretty different from Andy's dad as she doesn't talk very much on the show, but when we do hear her, she is pretty mild-mannered and happy-go-lucky, just a nice Minnesota mom. The clear-cut antagonist of the story is the not-so-friendly neighborhood bully Kyle Finkster, voiced by the voice of almost everyone ever, Billy West, along with his pet parrot, Salty Mike, voiced by Carlos Alazrak. The original voice behind Spyro the Dragon, before, you know, Spongebob took over. Kyle is your typical monster-drinking, drywall smasher in the making, with parents that encourage his aggressive and maniacal behavior. Oscar, Andy's friend, is another character we meet. He's voiced by Jason Spysak. He serves as the typical boy in a bubble next door, and is prone to sickness with germ-obsessed parents. It's very Miss Benson core, you know what I mean? Just look at his complexion. Why are they worried about germs? One ray of sun and it's over for him. Make sure he gets his cloud block, guys. Cartoon Network's new hit show, Squirrel Boy. Show the music! A brand new Squirrel Boy in Morningwood on Fridays. I am a little wet behind the ears. And dirty. The creator of Squirrel Boy is Everett Peck, who, while I was working on this video and watching through the series, unfortunately passed away. He was also the creator of the animated series Duckman, which, much like Squirrel Boy, also didn't have too much success, resulting in it being canceled abruptly and overlooked. Duckman is about the adventures of a crude talking duck named Eric T. Duckman, voiced by Jason Alexander, most famous for his role as George Costanza in Seinfeld. Duckman also has a partner named Cornfed, who is 
you guessed it, a pig. And together, they solve crimes. But let's save that for a Duckman video eventually, okay? But you can see Peck's commonly used themes and styles shining through in Duckman, which really helped me understand where he was coming from when he created Squirrel Boy. It also feels as if Squirrel Boy was a way for Peck to redo his Duckman idea, but this time, marketing it towards young kids, which at the time of its airing, is what possibly resulted in Duckman's initial failure. But ultimately, it was just bad timing for both of the shows. I can't help but think if they actually swapped and Squirrel Boy was released in the mid-90s and Duckman was released in the late 2000s, they both would have succeeded much more than they originally did. Comparative shows like BoJack Horseman, which premiered in 2014, obviously popped off despite being so similar to Duckman. BoJack just got the timing right, and Duckman unfortunately did not. Now, addressing the Squirrel Boy situation, I do think that the show would have done better having been released earlier, but not by a lot. Squirrel Boy is still Squirrel Boy. And forgive me if this comes off worse than how I mean it, but I don't think creating kids programming is Peck's strongest suit. His talents lie elsewhere, as evident with Duckman's belated success. In fact, Duckman is considered by Watch Mojo as the number one underrated cartoon TV series. Yeah, Watch Mojo. What are you going to do? Not listen to them? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for... On the other hand, Squirrel Boy, not so much of a belated success, nor truly having success during its initial run on Cartoon Network. The major sentiment lies in it falling short of a lot of things. The characters aren't really that likable, the plot is one-dimensional with nothing deeper than surface-level situations, and the comedy just doesn't overall hit. The show relies mostly on physical comedy, which is cool because at some points you can see how it directly was pulled from older Warner Bro cartoons. Now, I did smile at some one-liners, but it was too inconsistent and far and few between to be notable. I just never felt like it offered me something new within such a common genre of a human and animal getting into wacky situations. It felt too tame to compete with other slapstick and crass cartoons, as well as the jokes because of the situations they find themselves in, are all things I've heard before. The most fun part of Squirrel Boy is from going to McDonald's and getting the Nutty Rodney pencil topper toy from Cartoon Network's 2007 Happy Meal tie-in. He's got two nuts, two peanuts. And just look at this whole line of toys. I know what my next business expense will be. It's just truly sad that this was the last animation project that Everett Peck worked on before his recent passing. I know there was an idea out there that would fully fit his style. I could easily see some form of adult animation from him doing well. May he rest in peace. It was nice to see that Rodney did make a cameo in the OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes crossover Nexus special, a nice way to celebrate a small piece of Cartoon Network's history. Before that, Rodney and Andy both appear on the 20th anniversary poster for Cartoon Network. Oh, and that like really, really small cameo in the codename Kids Next Door and the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy crossover special, the Grim Adventures of the KND. So no matter what, Squirrel Boy is a part of the CN legacy. Now, after all that, why did Squirrel Boy come to an end after two seasons. I don't know, I ask myself that same question every morning, is the exact quote from Peck regarding the show, so that means I don't know either. Coming up next, it's Squirrel Boy. Now it's Squirrel Boy. <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> Peck has mentioned that the inspiration for Squirrel Boy comes from older Warner Bros. cartoons, the classics like Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner. Peck was an illustrator for 25 years before trying his hand at animation. In the past, he had done work for The New Yorker, Playboy, Time Magazine, Rolling Stones, and Sports Illustrated. His very colorful, exaggerated, highly stylized, and eccentric art is impressive, and I feel like the show could have done so much more creatively with Peck's talents. We saw in Teacher's Pet how a fine art style can be honored and used to emphasize the story being told. But for some reason, this show didn't embrace what they had, resulting in a fairly by-the-numbers looking cartoon. It tried to capture the energy and childhood magic that Phineas and Ferb eventually would, which premiered in 2007, but it falls flat. Not to mention, there's no fun B-plot. No Perry the Platypus and Doofenshmirtz equivalent. Like, at least give us something a little extra to keep my attention, or give me a laugh. I'm practically begging you at this point. I will give 
give the show credit, however. The art style, while not super stylized, isn't that bad, and I can see where the inspiration was pulled from with its rich backgrounds and a lot of depth added to it. Peck said in an interview that he wanted the series to feel like a bright, sunny day, which clearly it does give off those vibes. He wanted to take 50 style characters and move them into a slightly warped 21st century world, and that was successful. But when you take a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you're not putting 100% into both of them, sometimes you result in something that's just fine, rather than something special. There's the same pacing and physical comedy that are recognizable from old Warner Bros. cartoons as well, and the attitudes of the characters fall into line with beloved characters like Daffy Duck being similar to Rodney, and Randy as Porky Pig. Porky Pig did serve as a kind of straight man to balance out Daffy Duck. And hey, Rodney and Andy do tend to balance each other out. They don't balance out nicely, but they do for sure balance out. And hey, in the end, Squirrel Boy is definitely a cartoon. Outside of the cartoon, however, there were a few Cartoon Network games that accompanied the series, like One Squirrely Summer, The Squirrel of Sandwich, and Screwball Squeeze, which I actually had more fun playing these games than watching through the whole show, so do with that information what you will. It's always disappointing to revisit a show that isn't overall too great or live up to certain memories of nostalgia that you have for them. With Squirrel Boy, I remembered the show, but not much else about it, and after watching it, I can understand why that is. It's an okay time, pretty much harmless, but there are so many other shows that deserve your attention as well, and are well worth revisiting or seeking out for the first time. Even if you haven't seen it, it feels like we've all seen it before. But what about you? Do you even remember this show? And if so, what do you think about it overall? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this, or I'll hire a scroll to throw acorns at you until you do. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.